But when you look at the, the, the different denominations, you have seven major denominations, right? In Christian denominations. Yeah, just a, a, a Anglican, Episcopal, Scriptures and the Gospels, and Church Fathers. Assembly of God, the Bible only. Baptist, Bible only. Lutheran, Bible only. Methodist, the Bible only. Presbyterian, the Bible and the Confession of Faith. Roman Catholic, Bible, Church Fathers, Pope, Bishop. So the confessions and the creeds. That's it. Oh, uh, the apostles composing the creed by Tom Leroy, public domain. Right. This is, I got this from public domain. To understand what different Christian denominations believe, you can start with the ancient creeds and confessions, which spell out their major belief in a short Summary. The Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed both date back to the 4th century. Ang Anglican Episcopal Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed, Assembly of God, Statement of Fundamental Truth, Baptists generally avoid creeds or confessions that might compromise commitment to the scriptures as the sole rule of faith. Lutheran, Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed, Athasian Creed, Augsburg Confession, Formula of Conquerors, Methodist, Apostles' Creed and Nicene Creed, Presbyterian, Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed, Westminster Confession, Roman Catholic, many, yet focused on the Apostles' <laughs> hold, hold, Creed. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I didn't get that first point. What creeds? Many. Okay. Yet focus on the Apostles' Creed and Nicene Creed. Okay. Inerrancy and inspiration of Scripture. Christian denominations differ in how they view the authority of Scripture. The inspiration of Scripture identifies the belief that the Most High, by the power of the Holy Spirit, directed the writing of the Scriptures. The Inerrancy of scripture means the Bible is without error or fault in all that it teaches, but only in its original handwritten manuscript. Now, you have to understand that before you can even talk to a person about scripture, you first have to get past their color. Hopefully you can. Then you have to get past their political beliefs. Then you have to get their, past their, uh, their family culture and their racial culture. Then you can get into this. And then from this, you get into all the creeds. You get into all the inheritances. This is what you, this is why it's so difficult for people to be at one accord with each other. Yeah. Uh, Anglican Episcopal inspired Book of Common Prayer Baptist inspired and inerrant Lutheran both the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and the Evangel Evangel Man. Evangelical Lutheran Church in America consider scripture to be inspired and inerrant Methodist inspired and inerrant. Presbyterian, for some, the Bible is inerrant. For others, it is not necessarily factual, but it breathes with the life of the Most High. Roman Catholic, Most High is the author of sacred scripture. The divi divinely revealed realities which are contained and presented in the text of sacred scripture have been written down under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We must acknowledge that the books of scripture firmly, faithfully, and without error teach 
that truth which God, for the sake of our salvation, wished to see confided to the sacred scriptures. Catechism, second edition. Okay, so that's a mouthful, isn't it? So there are three different things that we went through. Belief, creed, and errancy. You've got to get past all that first. Do you see? So now we go to the Trinity, right? Because that's another doctrine that we have to go through because if I say I believe or I don't believe the Trinity, that person puts me in a category, uh-huh. right? Well, I, I really can't talk to him because he doesn't believe in the Trinity or he believes in the Trinity and I can't talk to them. It's, it's either or. The mysterious doctrine of the Trinity created divisions in the earliest days of Christianity, and those differences remain in Christian denominations until this day. Angelican Episcopal, there is only one living and true God, everlasting, without body, heart, or suffering, of infinite power, wisdom, and goodness maker and preserver of all things, both visible and invisible. And in unity of this Godhead, there are three persons of one substance, power and eternity, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of Anglican belief. Assembly of God. The terms Trinity and person as related to the Godhead, while not found in the scriptures, are words in harmony with Scripture. We, therefore, may speak with propriety of the Lord our God, who is one Lord, as a trinity, or as one being of three persons. AOG, Statement of Fundamental Truth. Okay, so you heard the second one, right? He said, even though it's not found anywhere in the Scripture, we're just going to believe this term. Why? Why do? Why does it need to be said like that? Why can't you just say what's in the scripture and believe it? See, this is the issue here. So they have made a term, and the reason why I'm saying this, let me tell you what I'm saying. The reason why I'm saying this is because if I say I believe in the Trinity, then I'm going to be judged based on something that's not even in the scripture. Do you believe in the rapture? Well, the term rapture is not in the scripture. But do you believe it? Well, it's not in the scripture. So, no. I believe that people will meet the Lord in heaven or or Messiah in, in, in heaven, just like it says. But there's no term that you're saying that's written in the scriptures like that. Right? So... They want me to say it. Why do they need me to say that? In order for me to be considered a believer. And that's the problem. So when you come against people that ask me immediately, because many people have done this. So do you believe in the Trinity? Because if you don't, then you're not really a believer. Can you show me it in the scripture? Well, it's not in the scripture. So what doctrine are you getting this from? Well, it's not. It's just a term that we use. Well, why don't you just use the terms that are in the scripture? Then? Because this is what we came up with. Well, who came up with it? Can you, can you pinpoint me where this all started? If I say nothing, I'm still criticized. So if I say yes, I'm criticized. If I say no, I'm criticized. And if I don't say anything, I'm criticized. Four, which causes division and causes people to separate from a person like me, right? Well, he just doesn't want to answer. So what does the Baptist say? The Lord is our God. The Lord our God is the one 
the only living and true God, whose substance is in and of himself. In this divine and infinite being, there are three substances, subsistences, hard word, the Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit. All are one in substance, power, and eternity, each having the whole divine essence, yet this essence being undivided. That's Baptist best of faith. Have you ever seen such a thing where it can be described so many different ways of the same thing that they're saying? Isn't that amazing? The man made up that term. But the people believe in the term more than looking at the fruits of people. Right. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because they can't even get through the door with talking to a person unless they answer that question first or unless they answer other questions first. They don't care about the fruits at that moment in time. They're meeting somebody for the first time. And I, I remember going to a, uh, uh, not a concert, uh, Benny Hinn, I think, me and my mom were going to. And the lady, my mother was right next to me. And she said, do you believe in Messiah? And I was thinking to myself, my mom's right next to me. Why did she ask her? That's weird. Why didn't she ask, do both of y'all believe? Why would you just come and ask me? I said, well, that's what I'm here for. Because I believe. Do you believe in the Trinity? Why is she not asking my mom over there whether she believes in the Trinity or not? So I said, well, what difference does it make? Well, I was just asking. I was like, so this is how you meet a total stranger? Those are the first words that you ask him? Not about Father's glorious and we all believe in Messiah. It's a great thing. I'm happy to be here. None of that? Those are the first things? Why me as a male? Why do you come to me asking me this question? Is what I kept thinking the whole time. So anyway, we did have a good time because at least everybody was worshiping Father the same way. When it came time to do that, I said, wow, this is a great feeling. You have Catholic here, you have different denominations, and the one thing that they do have in common is they all feel good worshiping Father at the very same time. At least that's in one accord. Yay, this is what I was thinking of myself. This is a great feeling. Why can't we fill up more football stadiums like this and just all worship Father in one accord like this? This is awesome. This is what I was thinking to myself. Regardless of whether they tried to push us down with Benny Hinn or, or not, you know, when they were waving their hand, I was like, why did that lady try to push me down? And me and my mom were looking at each other. What's going on? Why did he try to push us down? Well, anyway, it is because of the mass belief that people have. If you believe certain things, that's what you're going to go with. Now, whether this lady was right or wrong to ask me that question. That's a weird thing to start off with something. That's what I thought to myself. And then I kept being asked the same question over and over. And I was like, so if I say yes, then I'm in, right? Like Flynn. I'm, I'm part of their clique. But if no, I'm not part of their clique, do I even want to be? It left me with, well, it, tell, it tells you in the scripture that we should be all of one body. 
And it just doesn't seem like we're one body. Because the minute I say something like that, yes or no, then that's going to be an issue. And these are the reasons why, the things that we're, we're talking about right now. Read Lutheran real quick. We worship one God in Trinity, and Trinity in unity, neither confounding the person nor dividing the substance. For there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Ghost. But the Godhead of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost is all one. The glory equal, the majesty co-eternal, the Nietzschean creed, and the Philip, a Lutheran, a Lutheran approach. Okay, so let me ask you something. If you don't really know anything about the Bible or scriptures, and you have to pick a church to go to, and you're reading all of this, or you're hearing us read this, how do you choose something like this? With all these different things that are thrown in there, how do you make a decision? Let's let's read one more. Let's read the Roman Catholic. Thus, in the words of the Athanasian Athanasian Creed. Okay, okay. What the heck is that? Well, hold on, hold on. Let's start off with that. What is that? I don't even know. I, listen, if I were to go through every creed and define it for you, we'd be here for hours. So you first have to say, what is that? Then you have to go look that up, and you're going to probably say, I don't feel like doing that. I'm just going to spin the wheel or throw, you know, dice, and then I'll just pick one from there. I mean, because it is so complicated. So not only do they believe in this creed, what is the other thing? It says the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet, there are not three gods, but one God. And this trinity of persons, the Son is begotten of the Father by an eternal generation, and the Holy Spirit proceeds by an eternal possession from the Father and the Son. Yet, notwithstanding this difference as to origin, the persons are co-eternal and co-equal, all alike are uncreated and omnipotent. Dogma of the Trinity. Okay, so why can't they just throw what's exactly in the scripture? Why can't they just do that? And just call it a day? Copy and paste. (laughs) Right? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Right? Right. So then you have the nature of Messiah, which I'm not going to go into, because that will be here forever. All seven denominations agree that the resurrection of Messiah was a real event, historically verified. Okay? So that's one thing that they all agree on. Belief in the resurrection, and I'm not saying that any one person is right or wrong. I'm just saying there's a whole lot of doctrine in here. And the Messiah warns us about this this kind of stuff. The doctrine. Everything can't be right. Something has to be wrong in here. Right? Because if they're all saying something different, then that means somebody's doctrine has to be wrong. Whose? And then you have to go through the, the... the Bible, right? you can't go through the Bible if you're trying to learn from one of these places, right? So who do you go to? This is difficult. So we we haven't even talked about what they each believe salvation is, what the original sin is, because they differ in that too. The atonement is different. The nature of Mary, for some of them. The angels in the Bible is another issue. Satan and demons are different from each one of them as well, because I have a whole lot of documentation 
on all this that I'm just not going to read to y'all because we'd be here forever. And then you have free will and predestination. And eternal security. And last but not least, faith and works. They're all different from these different denominations. All of them are different. How is that possible that they can all be different? So that is very different. Then you would ask, what happened to the Old Testament believers when they died? You know, did they go to heaven or some other place? When the Most High, when when uh, the Messiah ascended into heaven, did he take the Old Testament saints with him, or were they already there? They keep going somewhere. Right, and that leads to a lot of other things. So it's ten forty six. Uh, oh, listen. It's 12.46, so I'm going to stop right here. And I need, I need everyone to understand mental illness is another thing that separates us. Everything is thrown to us, and if we're not wearing the full armor of the Most High, we are not going to be prepared for these things. But there is one fundamental truth to this. There's either error or truth, lie, truth, fact, truth. This is the same thing that just keeps going on. Something is not right. Because like I asked one of the brothers one time, I had said, you're saying that you're elite, right? You're one of the enlightened ones, right? You know how many times that I've heard this over and over before? Well, yeah. I said, so you have too, right? I said, there are at least a hundred different people in a hundred different denominations that all say the same thing. Even though the scriptures tell you that there is a remnant that is going to be saved, and they talk about 144,000 people. Why is this an issue? Why do everybody want to be the 144,000? Why is that important to them, and why do they need to be the enlightened ones? And the reason why I'm saying that is because they all think differently about this, and they all think they're right, all of them, all of them, and it doesn't matter whether they're white, black, Asian, Hispanic, all of them have an idea. And do you know what one of the ideas is not? It tells you that the person, the people of the 144,000 will be the tribes of Israel. They will be male. And they will never have been with a woman. So the people that I talked to, they're married, a lot of them, or been with a woman. So I said, well, how does that fit? And they give me some other reason, like it is a metaphor. And I said, do you know how many people have tried to tell me that, that it's a metaphor? And then other people tell me it's not a metaphor. And then other people, well, it's, it's spiritual that we haven't really been with anyone. Th these are the things that they tell me instead of, it just being the way it is. There's nowhere in the scriptures it's written like this thing. So, what do they do? They give me outside books. 
They give me all of these different prayer books or outside books or all of these different things where somebody else has written. And they try to explain this to me. And I said, why can't you just look at the scriptures and explain it to me from there? I seem to be able to explain just about everything in the scriptures. Why can't you do the same thing? Well, because, see, you have to understand that some things are outside the Bible. Okay, I'll give you that. Some things are outside the Bible. But this is not one of them. Because Father clearly tells you throughout the history of the scriptures that there's going to be a remnant and it's going to be the truth of Israel that he's going to keep. What's wrong with that? It also tells you there's a lot of other people that have white robes. So what is the big deal? Why do you have to be an elite or enlightened person? Why do you have to be that? And they all say the same thing because they have a message to tell everyone. And I am letting you know a hundred different denominations with a hundred different outcomes, somebody is wrong. They're all not right. But I read what's in the scriptures and it tells me what I need to look at. That's what I'm going with. If you're part of Father and you're part of Messiah, aren't you a leader already? Yeah. That's right. You tell them, right? Mm-hmm. 